We are here in the Garden of Gethsemane, the very place where Jesus was tempted for us. Yet, as St. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5, verse 15, unlike Adam, who gave in to temptation and gave in to sin, Christ was victorious over temptation, victorious over sin for us. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. As we continue to look at the conclusion of the Lord's Prayer, today we're going to turn our attention to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed to his Father at a moment in his life where he was at his complete end because in that moment he was carrying the weight of our sin on his own shoulders. And in that hour where he was feeling a separation from his father's love because of the sin that he bore for us, we see him resorting to and being strengthened by prayer. We're told in Luke chapter 22, beginning in verse 41, Jesus withdrew from the disciples about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. Now there is today a beautiful church called the Church of All Nations that is built on the place that is revered as the Garden of Gethsemane. And surrounding that church is a beautiful olive grove. And there are many pictures of that olive grove. And it it kind of stands in stark contrast to what Jesus was experiencing in that moment. The olive trees that are there are many hundreds, if not thousands of years old. And there is one tree in particular very close to the church uh, that many believe was alive at the time of Jesus in the garden when he prayed there. And there is a rock that has been exposed at, at the altar of the church where many Christians go to pray in the very place where Jesus prayed. Now, we don't need to to worry about whether or not this particular tree is, is the tree that Jesus prayed under or this particular rock is the rock that Jesus prayed on. But we do know that when Jesus was most stressed out, when he was most oppressed by Satan and, and burdened by the weight of our sin on his shoulders, he resorted to prayer. And this tells us how important it is for us as Christians to pray. And Jesus asked that his Father's will would be done, absolutely confident that it would be done. And so when we find ourselves at our wit's end and we don't have the answer to our problems, it is good for us to resort to prayer, not as a last resort, but rather as the first place that we go for hope and comfort. St. Paul also talks about the blessing of prayer, particularly in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, which is our memory verse for this video. He writes, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And so here, as a Christian, we have a wonderful comfort of knowing that even the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the one who knows us inside and out, the one who is our way of communicating with the Father, he prays on our behalf, just as he prayed on Jesus' behalf when Jesus was in the garden, Uh, and an angel appeared to him, so too we pray with the confidence of the Holy Spirit, knowing that even when we don't know what to say, God himself is praying for us, and God will answer our prayers according to what is best for us. Please pray with me. Dear Father in heaven, we ask that you would give us the faith always to be conscious of you in our life. Allow us to trust you and to find the blessing of your love when we call out to you in prayer. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings on your day.